Another form of stylization is the unmeasured fantasy. Now, for pianists who have been trained in canonical repertoire, this is a difficult way to play because for various reasons, this style just dropped out of the keyboard playing tradition of pianists. Even though in the time of the Baroque, it was extremely common. You may have encountered it in the Bach chromatic fantasy and fugue where in certain editions, earlier original Urtext editions, suddenly you hit these chords in long note values and you're supposed to freely arpeggiate them. However, some editions don't even want to let you have that responsibility, so they'll just notate it all as 16 notes going up and down. This style, again, known as unmeasured fantasy or arpeggiation or however you want to call it, was universally done in the Baroque. Many, many of Handel's preludes consist of nothing but chords written as half notes and whole notes. Uh, and and uh, it's possible to, to create an entire piece this way or to intersperse this style with scales and arpeggios and other things that are written out. I use it all the time for improvising because it's so useful. So I'd like to explain how it works and how we can apply it to Furno 1. The first thing to understand about it is that it is a rhetorical, dramatic, and performative way of playing music. It has to sound like it's your idea and that you personally feel intensely about this music. It can't sound like you're just reading off of a page. Okay, that's what I mean by performative and rhetorical. The second thing is that it's made up of big chunks of notes. The outer notes, the bass and the top note, have to follow voice leading rules of partimento, so no parallel fifths and octaves. But the inner notes can double and it doesn't really matter what they are, as long as the sonority is correct. And generally what you try to do is you try to get two handfuls of notes. So three or four notes in one hand and three or four in the other. And then you arpeggiate up and down one or more times, uh, and you can even break up the pattern in, in further ways, which I'll demonstrate shortly. So let me just play the first measure here. And by the way, uh, since I'm going to be playing whole handfuls of notes, I'm gonna get my hands apart a little bit because the left hand's gonna need to come way up, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna make sure there's enough room. If I start here, I guess my hands will be kind of close, but they'll be okay, I'll do it. So that would, that would be very, very simple, just a couple of sweeping arpeggios. Uh, however, I can take it up a notch and I can throw in wrong notes when I want to. Little uh, neighbor tones and passing tones. For example, I can put in that passing tone or even... So I'm getting an F sharp and an A in there. And then I would just let go of them. Those are known as achacaturas, and they just give a little bit more to the, to the sound. So. That would be an example of this style. And notice I, th I just threw in a scale uh, because that's part of the style as well. Uh, also, what you can do is uh, you can just freely change the chords and turn it into some other kind of arpeggio. I, I like this particularly. I don't like that voice leading. So I could do that little arpeggio thing if I want to. So. Because this is not common for pianists, and pianists haven't really heard it, you, you probably have to listen to some harpsichord music to get the hang of it. And uh, actually, harpsichordists didn't forget how to do this. There's a lot of great recordings where they play this style, and, and you really can pick it up. Um, so, um, and, and you'll need it <laughs> if you want to learn to be an improviser. So I might uh, try this piece something like this. You hear that? 
a nice little achaka tour. When you begin playing in the unmeasured fantasy style, you may wish to start simply by playing the structural chords once again. Then you'll need to move your hands apart because I don't have room in this nice close spacing to do what I want to do, so I might move my left, my, my left hand down and my right hand up and get a little bit more room. Then I need to think about where the soprano is going to go in relation to the bass. If you're worried about voice leading errors, always move the soprano in contrary motion to the bass. And if that's not possible, move in tenths with the bass and you will never have a voice leading problem. So I'm gonna start first position and in order to avoid any kind of problems, I'm going to go in contrary motion. So I can just grab these big sonorities like this. Contrary motion. And I could, now I could go in tenths. Contrary motion. Oblique motion. Contrary motion. Contrary motion. All right? So these will work beautifully. One of the elements of unmeasured fantasia is the idea of harmonic audacity. If you go through the literature where this stuff shows up, often it's built around very, very daring harmonic moves. And there aren't any daring harmonic moves in 401. <laughs> it's the most conservative harmonic thing you could ever imagine. So uh, you, you, you have to play it as though the dominant chord is the most amazing thing that anybody's ever heard, right? And... and kind of pause and go, eh, isn't that cool? That's basically the style, okay? So once you're ready to do that and you understand the style, play through. You don't have to go fast. You can arpeggiate the chords two times or three times. You can even do it four times. And it's very, very free. You can pause as much as you want. It's not measured. There's no specific meter. So you can have a lot of time to, uh, to, to play this. In fact, if you wanted to, if you felt like it, you could create an entire unmeasured fantasia prelude just by going up or down rule of the octave. So if I wanted to, probably would count as a page of music or a little prelude to a suite or something. You could totally get away with that in a concert if you needed to. And notice like how simple that actually was. It was just rule of the octave and just me sort of faking you out and making each chord sound more important than it really is. And, uh, and I've got myself a Baroque prelude. So unmeasured fantasia is a super fun, fairly easy way of stylizing a partimento once you get the hang of it. But you may need to take some time to get to know this style because it's not taught to typical classical pianists. Check it out, you'll enjoy it.
The Goldberg Variations, a work of genius, a masterpiece, beyond understanding, unapproachable. Or is it? To the student trained in Partimento, some of the things about a masterpiece like this cease to be mysteries.